Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Break. I am Charles, your instigator of creative distractions for today. I am going to be playing Commander Keen in Invasion of the Vorticons, Episode 1, Marooned on Mars. This was my childhood game because it was the only one I had on my computer back in the days of Windows 3.1 and when you actually had DOS. Not just a DOS emulator, but actual DOS. So I wanted to see just how it fared since 1990 when it came out. To kick things off, let's actually delve into the story because there's a story here and they actually took the time to put it together. Commander Keen, an invasion of the Vorticons. Billy Blaze, eight-year-old genius working diligently in his backyard clubhouse, has created an interstellar starship from old soup cans, rubber cement, and plastic tubing. While his folks are out of, on the town and the babysitter has fallen asleep, Billy travels into his backyard workshop, dons his brother's football helmet, and transforms into Commander Keen, Defender of Earth. In his ship, the Bean with Bacon Mega Rocket, Keen dispenses galactic justice with an iron hand. For Episode 1, Marooned on Mars. In this episode, aliens from the planet Vorticon 6 find out about the eight-year-old genius and plan his destruction. While Keen is out exploring the mountains of Mars, the Vorticons steal vital parts of his ship and take them to distant Martian cities. Can Keen recover all of the pieces of his ship and repel the Vorticon invasion? Will he make it back before his parents get home? Stay tuned! Just what have the Vorticons stolen? The bean with Bacon Mega Rocket was constructed from objects around the house that have been modified into starship parts. One joystick from your brother's video game for manual flight control. One car battery from your mom's car for electrical systems power. One vacuum cleaner from the kitchen, heavily modified, for your ion propulsion unit with carpet height adjustment. And one Everclear from your dad's liquor cabinet for fuel. The Vorticons have taken these pieces to the far reaches of Mars and are guarding them. You must find the members of this Vorticon outpost and wrest the parts back from their wicked clawed hands. As for information on Mars, unbeknownst to NASA, when the Viking lander settled to the surface of Mars, it caused a major political upheaval. Viking actually landed on the despotic Martian king. The Yorps, the extremely friendly one-eyed Martians, were free from enslavement and the Gargs, the vicious, aggressive Martians, were angry. The Martians created robots for menial work and guard duties. Beware of the tank-like guard robots. They are very good at what they do. Martians have been visiting Earth in UFOs for decades. Why? They come to our Earth for one reason. They want our toys! Hula hoops and skateboards are holy objects to them. Who knows? You may find some toys useful. There are signs everywhere. You haven't been able to decipher them yet. The adventure begins. Your task is before you. Go get them, Commander Keen. And then they have information on episodes two and three of this trilogy. But we're not going to get into those quite yet. We are going to start the game. We have four lives. We are Commander Keen. There is our ship. We are missing all four parts. Let's go find them. This is a side-scroller, obviously. You use the arrow keys to move about. You use the control key to jump. Picked up a laser. Oop. There we go. Thankfully, the first base, basically as it is, pretty straightforward no significant threats or at least no aggressive threats these are the yorps they just wander about but they'll knock you about so you can jump on their heads stun them for a bit or you can shoot them but i mean they've just been freed from enslavement why do you why do you got to go shoot them that sign i know says die because those things the little clams will kill you been picking up lollipops, 
Don't jump in the spiky pit of doom and sadness. More carnivorous clams. Pick up a book. Alright. Save this canister. Don't jump down, you silly person. You jump up. Because for this base pizza, we... Uh, nope. Leaving it. Leaving it. We are not going to speak of what just happened. So hey, here's the first level. You can move around with your arrow keys, you can jump around with a control button, you can pick up a little pistol, picking up lollipops, missing jumps, missing... I want to show the rest of this bit of this map, so for the sake of time, jump over the spike pit of doom and sadness, jump over you, grab the soda, leave. There we go. Once you finish a base, you can't go back. So we're going to go to this little house, pick up a holy object, the pogo stick, activate it with the alt key. If you hold down on control, you jump higher. And what these are, if you see next to my feet, there's one little pixel. These are invisible blocks. They're, I believe this is the only spot or the only house on this side of Mars that has it. There is a Garg. He will charge you and eat you. And for some reason, they generally guard teddy bears. Not quite sure why. Not sure what the lore is there. No fall damage, which is nice. Alright. Let's just power through the little huts that they have. Hey, it's a glowing yorp. You hear in your mind, it is too bad that you cannot read the standard galactic alphabet, human. Well, I've been able to decipher enough. Like, that says exit. We got a base to the left, we got a base here, we got a base there, we got a house here. <sighs> Come on. As you can see, it has been a fair while since I've actually played this game. Thankfully, with the pogo stick, you can skip that whole little jumping fun. Hey, another York. A message echoes in your head. The teleporter in the ice will send you to the dark side of Mars. That is your hint to get to a secret base. Which we will show in episode 3, because that base is hard. And that's probably going to be a standalone episode within itself. And because we have the pogo stick, we can do this now. Jump up here. Don't jump into the clams. What did I just tell you? Now I'm just getting... I don't even know what I'm getting. This is my... I think my fourth or fifth attempt to record just this first half of the map. You're not going to see all the times that it messed up because of... Either something didn't get saved right, the aspect ratio was off, or I died and then the entire rendering thing just imploded. It actually set my screen resolution to 600 by 800, but then in portrait format, so I couldn't do jack. Don't jump. That is a Vorticon. Go in your little house. Go in your little house. You gotta shoot him four times to kill him. And he jumps around a lot and changes directions, those crazy things. 
Now, the reason we're not leaving quite yet is because the key that I got doesn't actually go to that door. Mother son of a whore. This is... Jump in the pit. Game Break is supposed to be a calming experience where we have fun with games we either enjoyed in the past or have never played before and want to experience the lore and the gameplay and to see what's going on in the story. It is not supposed to actually make us almost rage quit. Do I have... okay, at least I still have my ray gun charges. And that sound means that I just got an extra life, which apparently I'm going to need. Don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. He can jump high enough to kill me there. Like that. Go in your house. Go in your house. Good. Okay. Now, as I was saying, we're going to come down here. Because the key card that I got up in the upper right is not actually the one that opens that door. I just wanted to get the Vorticon out of the way because reasons. You gotta come down here. Out of my way. I only have one shot and I need it. Unlocks that door. Hey, it's another Garg. You can go around and go down there for extra charges if you accidentally run out or miss or anything. So, but if you run out, there's not an unlimited supply, so you have to get pretty good with your shots. All right, so we got the second key card. And it's actually very easy to run out of shots because alt control fires. So if you're doing a jump, hey, we got the battery. If we if you do a jump and you time it poorly with your key pushings, you can fire your laser unexpectedly. Theoretically, you can actually get all of those. I have never gotten all of those. That's pretty much the best I can ever manage. All right. Bunch of Yorps. We need a key card. Where is the key card? Hey, it's over here. For the sake of expediency, well, actually the opposite for the sake of expediency, I'm going to grab all of these because I'm gonna need extra lives. Because reasons. Presuming that this thing actually saved my better run from earlier, where I actually got across the whole map without dying once, and I got all sorts. I got a couple extra lives. I'm probably gonna actually pull from that one for next episode. Because I left off on the east side. We're currently on the west. Alright. You go that way. Now, see, it doesn't really take much to get an extra life, which is good. You can probably get three extra lives alone on the western side of the map. It's just split two ways, because there's one teleporter. Gee, they've already given us two ray guns. I wonder why. Because there's a douche up there. This one's a little trickier. You can't always trap him in there, so he's going to jump. It's only terrifying if he makes it over this before you get to him. I'm not going to push my luck. Uh, no, I'm not going to push my luck. You can get the two books up there for a decent amount of points. There's your joystick. And I'm curious. Yeah. There's nothing over here. 
All right, so we now have half of our ship parts. We've done everything except for this. If you took the time to get the pogo stick, you can bypass a lot of shenanigans. Just how many shenanigans, you ask? Yep, that's the one. Uh, seven charges, okay. That'll be enough. There's two ship parts per side, so another guard. Is it? That's that's literally how easy this one is. I'm not gonna tell you how long it took me as a kid to actually get this far. I mean, hours, lives. I don't know how many times. Teleporter. So for next episode, we have one base, one house, two house, three house, four house, two base, five house, three base. And I forget which of the bases in the ice gets you. Up there on the right side of the screen is where the secret base is. I know how to get there, it's just I forget which base has it. So. Tune in next episode as we go play that. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Game Break. Now, get back to being creative already. Greetings and salutations, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Break. I am Charles, your instigator of creative distractions for Commander Keen, an invasion of the Vorticons. Billy Blaze, eight-year-old genius working diligently in his backyard clubhouse, has created an interstellar starship from old soup cans, rubber cement, and plastic tubing. While his folks are out of, on the town and the babysitter has fallen asleep, Billy travels into his backyard workshop, dons his brother's football helmet, and transforms into... Commander Keen, Defender of Earth. In his ship, the Bean with Bacon Mega Rocket, Keen dispenses galactic justice with an iron hand. For Episode 1, Marooned on Mars. In this episode, Alien for Today, I am going to be playing Commander Keen in Invasion of the Vorticons. Episode 1, Marooned on Mars. This was my childhood game because it was the only one I had on my computer back in the days of Windows 3.1 and when you actually had DOS. Not just a DOS emulator, but actual DOS. So I wanted to see just how it fared since 1990 when it came out. To kick things off, let's actually delve into the story because there's a story here and they actually took the time to put it together. 